Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Simply Fit Podcast. I am very excited to be joined by a EHC client today and the first of a series that we've been waiting for a long time to do. I've had a lot of recommendations that people want to hear from the people that we have been working with who have gone through their health and fitness journey. Of course, it's great that I can give you tips and tricks, but it's amazing when you can hear this from someone who's gone through the journey, who isn't necessarily well-versed in health and fitness to begin with, who's kind of coming from a very, very like low baseline in terms of knowledge or experience within the gym, within their nutrition, and then basically achieving something that's pretty phenomenal when it comes to their health and fitness. So starting from zero and essentially going to hundred. So I want to introduce you to Anika, who's here with me today. How are you, Anika? I'm good. Thank you. Really excited to be on here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. And myself and Anika have been working together for a couple of years now. So I would love to go through your superhero origin story first, Anika. So just give a little bit of context of who you are and your journey. And then we're going to kind of map out those past two years from where you started to where you are today. So who is Anika? Hi. So I um, actually originally started my health and fitness journey for purely aesthetic reasons, um, wanted to lose a bit of weight for my wedding so I could look a bit nicer in my outfits um, and feel a bit more confident. And in doing so, you know, in that time, it a lot of, as well as like the, the fitness side of things and the aesthetic side of things, I began to realize that I was having a bit of a mindset shift as well, not a bit of a mindset shift, a massive mindset shift um, and more of self-realization and things like that. And, you know, um, realized that I was actually dealing with anxiety and um, all that, I was going to say all that good stuff, but not all that good stuff, um, all that stuff. So, um, you know, my lifestyle completely changed. It used to revolve around loads of socials and the socials revolved around drinking mainly um eating lots of food not thinking about what i was consuming how much i was consuming um no act not even thinking about activity and you know upon kind of meeting elliot and him imparting his wisdom upon me i've managed to completely change my lifestyle now and it's been a two-year journey it's still a journey um still you know, learning, I'm still making improvements, um, but I'm now living a completely different life. Um, still having socials, still going to socials, um, but, you know, managing them very differently and maintaining um, the results that we've achieved, um, both mentally and physically. So, yeah. Absolutely. And that's a primary reason why I wanted to bring you on today and show people this example is because of you've come from a place of, like you said, going out, not caring about nutrition, not really training or anything like that to coming full circle and now being your very own health and fitness online coach as well, which is quite a transformation, not only from a physical perspective, but like I said, from a mindset and lifestyle perspective. So let's go back to prior to starting, like what did a typical day in the life of nutrition and exercise, if there was any there, look like? Oh my God, I can't even, let, you need to give me a second to think because it would literally like some days would be oh I, so i used to work in town i actually still technically do working from home at the moment um so you know on the way in i might gra- literally used to grab like a pan of chocolate on the way in with a coffee most days um and then you know grabbing what you think is what i thought was a healthy salad from pret or even like a mac and cheese if i'd been drinking the night before um and not thinking about you know what's in it, what's in everything. And then dinner would um, generally be, you know, whatever was made at home. Um, I was living at home at the time. So whatever my family were eating, I was eating. Um, Again, just not thinking about how much I was consuming. Um, You know, it's not to say that, you know, you shouldn't eat these foods. It's just after like learning, um, it's more about balance and, you know, managing how much to eat of certain foods. So that's, yeah, like, very uh, it was a prep lifestyle and drinks <laughs> the night before is what it looked like it's not that unfamiliar i think prep <laughs> fuels most of london to be completely honest so <laughs> what about exercise was there much exercise involved was there walking was there or uh not consciously walking so maybe you know um from the station to the office to prep <laughs> back to the office but not like to go out for a walk so to speak um and again you know i had joined the gym near my office it was the fitness first which was quite nice um 
go in there with a colleague of mine who are like now very good friends and we'd wing it we'd like think we know what we're doing um had no idea what we were doing and um like go to the classes and things like that so really had no idea to be honest and, and that wouldn't be like a consistent thing like we might make it once every three weeks um if we weren't going for drinks on a Thursday I don't know <laughs> yeah that's what it looked like <laughs> See, that's why it's funny for me to even hear this as well. I was saying to you before we went on live is that you sometimes speak about, you know, in, in passing about the older Nico who would go out for drinks and stuff like that. And obviously I didn't experience that whatsoever. So it's even unusual for me to hear that. So at the point in which you knew the wedding was coming up, how long did you think about signing up and getting started on your health and fitness journey? Because if it usually, it's an interesting one actually to find out how long it takes for people to hit the trigger. You are still relatively young, well, quite young by my estimation. And, you know, some people wait until years and years and years down the line before they get started on their journey. So what caused you to do it? And at, you know, the specific time, which was roughly two years ago from today, really? Yeah. So I was, so I'd always, struggled to lose weight and um, you know I try and it's strange for me to now say that because obviously the lifestyle I was living wouldn't have helped me trying to lose weight thinking about it now and um, that so nothing was working um you know you'd I'd see PTs in the gym and um, they'd give you an hour of their time but they wouldn't really give you anything around nutrition and things like that um, and then when I you know heard about online coaching my friend was doing it at the time and um, he would, he saw really, really amazing results. Um, within a few weeks it was. And so I thought, you know, why not give it a go? Um, and especially because the wedding was coming up. Um, and in all honesty, even when I started with you, I didn't, I would have been happy if I'd lost like three or four kg. Like I never in a million years would have thought, I'm, we'll get a bit emotional. I never would have thought that I would have, you know, lost as much as I did and, be in the place that I am now, like it's completely changed my life. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Props to you for making that decision and kind of not giving it as much thought as maybe some people do, because sometimes you do get that paralysis by analysis. So it's great that you just kind of saw what was possible from someone else and jumped in. And yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned about your expectations as well. It's because of when I have people come in, I'm like, yep, I reckon you can drop about 10 to 15 kilos. And, you know, just like you said, they're like, I'll be happy with three or five because they've never done it before. Yeah. So, you know, that's an interesting one. So you mentioned that you would had tried to lose weight in the past. What things had you tried and when did you try to do that? <laughs> Um, so again, it would be, you know, me thinking, I know what I'm doing at the gym and it might've meant that I was going once or twice a week for three weeks, like, um, con what's the word consecutively. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that alongside, you know, thinking I was eating healthy. So that might've looked like, you know, instead of grabbing a croissant, I would have gotten an avocado on toast. And again, you know, we spoke about the, um, salads from prep. Um, and even though, yep, it's a salad, you actually don't know how many calories you're consuming. And obviously this whole thing is about, you know, if you're in a fat loss um, phase, it's calorie deficit and you don't realize how it actually adds up very quickly without like realizing. And I had no idea. Um, and again, you know, I would think, oh, I can't eat rice when I go home. So I'll just have a bit of curry or whatever it might have been. Um, obviously completely like the had no idea what I was doing and just reading stuff online as well, which did not help because there's so much information, misinformation out there. hundred percent. And I, I don't think that's um, unusual either. I think that's the general approach of most people that are like, cause it is quite frequent. I have people start with me and they're like, I'm eating relatively healthy. And then obviously you dive into what healthy looks like. And it's not necessarily the foods are bad or their portion sizes are out of control. It's just the fact that the ratios of them are a little bit, not aligned with where they want to be and um, plus obviously the weekends of drinking occasionally and also probably the time frame they give themselves like you know three weeks or four weeks is you, you might see something but you're not going to see a huge amount so i think that's pretty frequent as well and it's funny you mentioned about the prep as well it's like anytime i go in and i'm like i go and get like their prep oats right and they're like 
do you want the um the seeds and the honey and if you actually look at the calories and the seeds and the honey it's probably almost as much in the, that's in the pot of porridge right which is insane so you know people go in expecting a healthy porridge healthy salad and end up eating probably more calories than they would have done if they had just like a sandwich and a croissant right yeah exactly and also just kind of to go back to your um previous question it's just something like with signing up to you it was one of those things where you, you can't think about it too much like just do it and the quicker you do it the quicker you will see results basically <laughs> and the longer you put it off the more reasons yeah. you'll find not to do it right that's yeah. what i find as well and it's not just with health and fitness it's just about anything because of then those doubts creep in and the reasons why you might not be able to do it comes in. Okay, perfect. That gives me a good summary. So the way I've got your journey summed up here over these couple of years since you started, you go started the fat loss phase. This is obviously a very brief overview, but that's, you know, back in 2019. So that's two years now. You get in shape for the wedding. You're pretty steady on the fat loss phase. There's ups and downs. Obviously you had a holiday in between that as well. And then you end up yeah. getting in shape for the wedding. You had the family challenges, which I want to go through in just a second of the, you know, the peer pressure to eat a certain way and everything along those lines. Then you had all the cancellations with the wedding because of COVID happened, right? Mm -hmm. Or cancellation of the honeymoon and everything along those lines, which threw you off a little bit. So it did, we weren't able to manage the back end of the, like the, or the reverse diet quite as effectively as we wanted to slowly yeah. got back on track after losing your way a little and then trying to build and uh, build and build through the back end of 2020 kind of hit your stride towards the late end of 2020 into 2021 and then got <laughs> into the best shape of your life just a couple of months ago with the photo shoot is that a fair assessment of those two years perfect yeah on nail on the head <laughs> perfect no so that hopefully gives the listeners a good idea of how it's been so because if you went through your second second fat loss phase in order to get to the photo shoot so i want to go back to the first one because of obviously this was the first time you dedicated yourself to a process like this obviously you had those bouts of trying to lose weight in the past but this is like the full, first fully committed one so a couple of challenges that you faced was obviously going away on the holiday um the challenges around the anxiety and realizing that and then also i would probably tie into that the the pressures of family pressures of or extended family along with you know managing socials going to weddings and stuff like that so how did you find let's start with the managing the challenge of the social side of things you know not only in social settings but the peer pressure from family as well because i think that's one that a lot of people will relate to yeah of course so there were i guess there were two elements to my to the socials for me the month i signed up i think three weeks later i went on my own hen to ibiza so that was all kind of planning, you know, maybe it meant that I wasn't actually drinking as much and I was very, very conscious of what I was eating. Um, and friends were like, what are you do Like, <laughs> why? Um, but again, it was the first time that I had to deal with kind of it's just sticking to my own guns in my head and just keeping in mind the end goal um, and the fact that I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing it for anybody else at the end at the end of the day. Um, and then along with that, obviously, came um, weddings. And there were lots of very close um, family and friend weddings that, that year, that summer. Um, and again, it, I, you know, it meant that I didn't drink um, at some of these receptions where, where I usually would have. But actually, I was full of energy. Um, like, I had just as much fun. Um, and what also helped was actually a few of my friends um, not naming any names, but also you were, you were coaching them um, and it helped that they were there as well, not drinking. Um, so that was um, that also helped as well. So it, I guess surrounding yourself with people who are also on the same journey helped as well. Um, and that also helps when you have like when you you've built your community and like speaking like I now speak to certain people outside of our calls, which is really nice. Um, and then also with the family stuff, um, it's just, you know, having so I've had to explain it to my, my immediate family um, why I was doing these things. And they actually saw that I, even though I was doing this like diet, I'm saying quotes, um, they, real, they could see that I was actually eating a lot more food than I used to eat because before I used to eat high, ca like high calorific food, but not much of it. Whereas I was eating high volume, good food. And they could see that they saw that that's what I was eating and they kind of incorporated it into their own routines, which was quite nice. And then it was dealing with the external family who 
would have things to say. Um, and, you know, when people say things like, oh, you've lost loads of weight or whatever it might be, like in your head, just be like, okay, so what I'm doing is working. And um, just, again, keep in mind that you're doing it for yourself. And remember that, you know, everyone's on their own journey and just explain to them that, you know, maybe I'm not hungry right now, um, you know, I'll, I'll eat later and then don't have it. Um, and um, just, yeah, like turn a blind eye at the end of the day, like in one ear and out the other. It's it, You're doing it for you. Like it's your own health. It's your own body. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how I've managed it. I still get comments now, you know, I hadn't seen one of my aunts in months and she was like oh you've lost loads of weight haven't you and i was like mm, yeah i have <laughs> um but yeah no 100 percent, and i feel like that's going to be a lot of people and it's interesting we say to this day you still get those comments as well and yeah. you probably will for the foreseeable too so in the i know you're very headstrong with it now but in the early stages like how would you overcome because of in the first even with myself in the early stages if someone commented on my physique that i didn't like it it was hard for it to go in one ear and out the other it was only through time how did you cultivate that after like the consistent comments you were getting oh god i think it because it became more regular so i think initially obviously it did knock me because people were like oh they weren't being nice about it but it's one of those things in our culture where if you're, I used to get comments like when I got came back from uni being like, oh, you've put on weight. And it's like, okay, maybe I have, but it, like, you can never make anybody happy. Like they'll say something if you've put on a bit of weight, they'll say something if you've lost a bit of weight. And it's kind of trying to kind of take a step back. Like in the moment you're like, you're taken back a bit and kind of just smile and nod um, and just deal with it. But then when I like started thinking about it and started thinking that people said things to me when I had put on weight, people are saying things to me now, you're not going to make anyone happy ever. And again, it, that's when it kind of went back to knowing that you're doing it for you and you're not doing it to make anyone else happy. Um, yeah. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, for sure. And I think it, a lot of it is just standing the test of time, right? Just like being persistent with following through on that too, because if, I feel like if you let people break you down and they continue with those comments and you kind of give in to those, then that's, yeah. that's the big thing with boundaries, right? It's not even just about the comments, but it's like people in certain situations, they're forced to eat certain foods, right? Which I think you had experience of as well. And if you do then give in, which I think I say to a lot of people that I work with, like, you've got to pick your battles. There'll be some in which you're like, you know what? I am going to stay strong here. It, you know, maybe it's with your mum and dad. If you're always at home, then you kind of do need to stand your ground there. Otherwise you're going to get it on a daily basis. But if it's like, you know, visiting in-laws or something like that, then you might just manipulate your calories so that you can then accommodate, you know, I don't, I don't always believe in this, but sometimes I understand where other people are coming from. They're like, I just don't want to be the awkward one. I only see my in-laws maybe every three months i can just navigate my calories for one day and i think that's fair enough so that that's good yeah. to hear as well and there was one one it literally just reminded me there was a, we went out for chinese not so long ago and um i was eating i accounted for it i was enjoying myself and the person sitting next to me turned to me and said oh do you really struggle just to have one thing when you come out now like expecting me to not be eating when i'm out and it's you you still get those slight like People will swing it in really weird. And I was like, no, I'm eating because I like it and I, I can. Like, it's not because it's not because of anything else. So still get it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I think is ongoing. But the more you obviously embody it, you live it um, and you stand by it, like, you know, they might reduce a little bit. And it's funny, like it comes full circle, eventually those people. And I always think that this comes from a place of insecurity and, you know, jealousy to, to, to a degree um or maybe even just like a lack of understanding for naivety but eventually those people are the ones who start then thinking oh yeah who was that coach you were working with and you know that tends it tends to come full circle like that that's the good examples so coming on to the next one obviously you had um some challenges with anxiety as well and i feel like your journey has been one of so uh, growing in self-awareness as well right you've adopted practices like uh, journaling and uh, things along those lines, a lot of mindfulness practices. So how did you navigate those challenges you had towards, I want to say, autumn of 2019 to where you find yourself today, where even with some recent challenges you had, you were able to navigate those quite, quite well? Yeah. So 
I realized, I guess when, you know, my food went, was clean, um, I wasn't drinking, um, my anxiety actually just naturally kind of, it started getting a bit better naturally. Um, so I had previously been to the doctor about it and stuff. And, um, I used to get, you know, when I'd go to sleep, I'd get a shortness of breath, um, before I'd sleep. And it, it wouldn't have been that I was thinking about anything specific, but I couldn't, you know, there was just something underlying that was just not okay. And I'd just be feeling weird and anxious in certain situations. And then in autumn, when I guess I got, came back from holiday, cause I had kind of gone off piste when I, when I was away and a little bit before. Um, I wasn't really checking in and then Elliot, you, you, I remember you like emailed me like, is everything okay? I haven't heard from you. Um, the kind of um, journaling and then, you know, having like a nighttime routine, switching off from electronics, everything that you talk about, honestly, like I implemented most things before bed and it's helped me so much. So my nighttime routine now consists of the switching off from laptop, phone, um, TV, I have a really nice skincare routine, which I do now. Um, either that or I'll have a really nice hot shower, jump into bed, put pen to paper and journal. Like you said, it doesn't even need to make sense. Even if you've had a good day, even if I've had like an amazing day, like I'll just write and um, close it. So it's from my head on paper. And then either like I'll sleep, listen to a sleep story or like, you know, a guided sleep meditation. And it just like, it just works wonders. and and even my morning routine, you know, um, most people who know me know that I go to the gym like quite early in the morning. Um, and it's just a really nice start to the day. Like you feel like you've accomplished something. It wakes your body up. It wakes your mind up. Um, you know, I'm in there usually around 6am, um, done and dusted such, such a lovely way to start the day. Um, and again, it's something I would never have done before. Like I used to be in bed until like, until I had to get up previously. And now it's like unknown to me. Like be like, no, I need to go. Um, so yeah, it's just ch like changing lifestyle as well. Um, and implementing those like wellness tactics to help with anxiety and also eating well, like you nourish your body with goodness and you know, you just see loads of changes. <laughs> hundred percent. No, I, love I Anna, completely agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, you, you share some similarities there, definitely. I mean, your stories sound very similar in terms of how you worked on that anxiety thing. And then also your story, your backstories as well, about how you got into fitness too. So it's funny to see those um, correlations. And I think you're right on the um, the morning uh, training side of things as well. And I say to people, anyone who's got a busy schedule during the day, it's just like, even if you don't necessarily like training in the morning, I think it's going to be beneficial because if not only do you get out of the way, you get sunlight early in the day, as long as, you know, the sun is up, um, you get movement, you know, and then you don't have to worry about stressing about it being in the back of your mind to the world's back in the day. And then once you finish work, when you close that laptop lid, like your time is your time, you know? So I think it's super, super beneficial. So that's one thing I think the listeners should take away from that as well. So obviously a lot of changes that happened during your journey as well. What do you think was like the most challenging change to make? Was it to your day-to-day -day nutrition? Was it implementing training consistently? Was it the socials? What would you say was the biggest challenge when it comes to the transitions you made? Um, I think for me, the biggest thing was the nutrition, um, you know, you've lived well I've lived my whole life eating and living a certain way and eating certain foods a certain way and you know ever since I was younger I was I had a very active childhood you know swimming um people laugh at this but karate like I was very very active gymnastics and then I went from that to uni where I drank and did nothing and then continued that lifestyle um and when I was really active um you know we I used like we used to have crisps, chocolate in the house, um, cookies, and it was go to whenever you want. Like there was a cupboard stocked with that food. And my brother and I have very, very similar um, eating habits. And that's because of the environment we were brought up in. And so for me, that was probably one of the biggest challenges and also kind of living at home when I was getting ready for the wedding having those Indian snacks as well. Like, so forget the chocolate and crisps because I made them stop buying those from the supermarket. But like even all the other bits, I was, it was like, oh, that was the tough thing. Um, and yeah, so for me, that was it. And then I guess then kind of moving here, we now just, we only buy 
what we need um and what i've accounted for in my like in my day-to-day -day plan um so i i don't go off piste or i can have that bit of chocolate and it was learning about balance again so having enjoying the things you like so the chocolates and stuff but in moderation right not having i don't know three bars <laughs> um and things like that when you do feel a little bit hungry and also pushing through that hunger because it's that immediate gratification right um that we spoke about that if you want to if you want to see change you've got to make changes so that's what that's what i found um quite difficult um but yeah i mean it's been a learning curve but <laughs> it's been good <laughs> It's ongoing, right? And I think you made a good point there. I think people ask the secrets of my success and like, go into my cupboards now and try and find something that you could binge on or you could actually yeah. overdo. You can't. And that's done intentionally because I know my nature and people would assume that it's not the case because I've been a coach for years and years. But like, if you put snacks in a cupboard, I'm going to be all over it. Like, I don't want them in, within my vicinity. Like, I know myself. And that's why a lot of people, I think, you know, there's times where they can't remove them, but, you know, you need to kind of create boundaries for yourself and understand your own triggers. And if you can remove them, like, and again, with myself and probably with yourself as well, if I'm going to have something at home, it's going to be like a single pack. I'm not going to go get like a multi-pack because if it's left over, I'm going to keep visiting it. Exactly. And that's the thing, obviously got the husband and I don't want to stop him from obviously if he enjoys his snacks I'm not I'm not pushing anything on him so you know we do have certain things in the house but it's then you know it's that mind challenge and just pushing through it um, tell us the story <laughs> about your um jar of lotus spread oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that was so oh so this is when you, I guess when you spoke about me <laughs> it being difficult to stay on track after my first fat loss phase, um, we, I had never had or tried lotus bread before. I, I didn't know what it was. Um, and it was introduced to me and it became a thing where in the evenings I would have a bit on some bread and then it turned into, I'd grab a spoon and the jar and just have like a, a teaspoon. But then that teaspoon became like five teaspoons in a day. And then it just it just got really out of hand um, where I think we got to. But I think I was like really getting back into the fat, my fat loss phase. And I we had no. So my husband would hide the jars in the hat in the in the kitchen and I found them and I was going to go in and I was like, I, I can't because I've been on such a good like on such a good um, phase. Um, I, my friend told me she, if she used to do this, she'd have a whole jar and she'd just flood it with water because she didn't want any more and she just didn't want to go back in. So I was like, I thought of her and I was like, right, I'm going to do this. So I flooded the jar of Biscoff and that was it. We haven't bought a jar since. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. And it had to be done. <laughs> This stuff is so deadly. I had it recently. Um, I put it in like a shake and I licked the spoon. I was like, oh, I know why this is like not good to have around. Yeah, yeah I don't know. it's really Whoever dangerous. made that, yeah, dangerous. <laughs> so thank you for uh, telling your story about that. I think it was uh, a good, I, I always remember here. I think we, we shared that on the webinar as well, right? I wanted people to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So coming oh, back gosh. to that position after your first fat loss phase so you got into fantastic shape for the wedding right um you got into the best shape you've ever been in and then obviously we yeah. planned to do a bit of a reverse diet afterwards we we had an awareness that you were going on your honeymoon but then that was very aligned with the time where the the lockdown started happening covid really kicked off so go through what happened from when you had your wedding what the plans were for the honeymoon and then what happened in between because that's probably you know, in, you know, in the superhero story where it's all going well, there's a bit of a dip in the road and then they come back out. This was probably your dip in the road, right? Yeah, it was a massive dip. I think, um, you know, we, um, had planned to, so we had had, luckily, thank God had our civil, um, and the big Indian wedding was supposed to be, um, on the 21st of March and Boris called lockdown on the 23rd. However, that week on the lead up to cases were just going up and up and we just made the decision to cancel the wedding. Obviously, it's something I'd like dreamt about forever. Um, really, really heartbroken. Um, 
honeymoon then also gets cancelled and I was like well this is really crap because you know it's just something you look forward to your whole life you know um it's also really obviously looking forward to the honeymoon and um it just wasn't the way that I dreamt it would happen and also obviously as you're planning it you're like oh my god my dreams are coming true as cheesy as it sounds um and then everything gets cancelled um and lockdown happens so then you're like well, can I see my family can I, I can't see my friends um so this whole all this change I'm sure a lot of people have like obviously um you know gone through similar similar things and um as a result of that I was like okay well I'm in good shape I'm still working out I'm still going for my walks I'm just gonna eat like I'm not I'm not gonna track what I'm eating or I'm not gonna think about what I'm eating too much and that's kind of when it started going a bit downhill because I was then the lotus came in um wasn't thinking about you know what i was eating to be honest um and it just the weight just started creeping it started to creep up it was creeping up slowly and i was like oh it's fine i'm still okay like i don't mind this weight and then it kind of it went past a certain number on the scale and i was like okay if this continues i'm just going to be back at square one and the whole of last year and what i worked for is just going to go down the drain um which is when I kicked my butt into gear and I think it was also at the time where you were like, are you ha like, do you actually want to do this fat loss phase or are you happy with the way things are? Because you were, I think you were obviously like, what am I supposed to do as a coach right now? Um, so yeah, and that's kind of when I just thought I just need to sort myself out and stop feeling sorry for myself and deal with it. <laughs> um, and obviously as a result of kind of getting back on track, it's, it made me feel better, right? Like I was eating better again, mentally I was feeling better. Well, that's, it comes full circle. I think it's a fairly reasonable response. I mean, most people, even if they didn't have any plans, just the whole lockdown period and the transitions they had to make for their life, like people did lean on food. So for having that situation to navigate, Plus, obviously, I think that you just left your home as well, right? So that was all very new. You had the wedding of your yeah. life, like, you know, cancelled. Your honeymoon was cancelled. So you kind of probably just found yourself in a position where, you know, it was all pretty much just sucked a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> and we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't even go anywhere, right? Like, stuck. Uh, couldn't go to restaurants. Yeah, it was just a crappy time for everybody, I think. That makes sense. Yeah. And then, um, in terms of you like digging yourself back out of that, what did you, what did you find that was helpful in terms of kicking you up the butt again? Cause that's what you mentioned. You said you gave yourself a kick up the butt. What was it? Did you need to give yourself like a bit of a pep talk? Did you have to look in the mirror and just be like, I don't want to be back to square one. What was kind of the catalyst for change there? Yeah, it was, um, I think it was a combination of things. I think it was, um, it was the scale firstly, the number on the scale, it was then the photos I was sending you because I was like this is going back like this isn't happening um, and then the third thing was obviously you kind of just in a nice way you did you, you're never horrible but you did you were just like you know do you want to do this or do you want to just kind of coast and like be where you're at kind of thing um, and that's when I was like you know I, I just I don't want to kind of go back to where I was and yeah it also obviously I just keep going back to mentally, like, you know, when you are just focusing on you, like you just feel so much better. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's interesting. A lot of different forms of accountability. So there was coach accountability. There was your own accountability by seeing the scales and seeing the photos as well. So it's interesting that just having that awareness, because if I feel like a lot of people will find themselves in a position they don't want to be because they hide from those things, right? They, they drop off working with their coach so they don't have anyone to be checking in on them they yeah. stop taking photos they stop weighing themselves so it's interesting that you maintain those things and it kind of kept yeah. this front of mind yeah that's the thing i think if i had like if you know if after the wedding i was like i'm done and i hadn't i didn't have you to hold me accountable like those photos i wouldn't have seen those photos i wouldn't have stepped on the scale as often it like it would have gone it would have just i would have just gone back to square one to be honest so I think that's yeah. a good argument to um, say that people should continue to regularly just not even maybe not on a like a daily basis but on a regular basis keep an eye on their way keep an eye on their photos and stuff like that just so they can't hide from reality if things are slipping back so i think that's an interesting point to make mention and the next aspect that i wanted to touch on is 
Ah, yes. It was just about talking about when I, as a coach had to take like a little bit of a step back and think, okay, Anika's doing good. You know, it's like, she's getting her training sessions in occasionally. She's not super adherent with nutrition. You know, we're getting these, you know, you're maintaining your weight on the scale. And I was like, she's doing good. But when mm. we spoke on the phone, she wants to achieve, you know, she wants to go through this battle. So she wants to get to this way. Yeah. So like there was a bit of a two minds and I had to, you know, I have to make a decision that, okay, do I carry on doing things the way we are because of you were doing better than you were doing before. But at the same time, I was like, I know that you can do better. So it was part of me. I was like, okay, I don't want to disrupt this momentum because it's definitely better, but it's not where you could be. So eventually I think I was like, let me make this call and just say, Hey, you know what, if you want to go ahead and, and push harder, then great, let's do it. But if you're happy, just kind of, yeah, making these small progressions, then let's do it as well. And I think that kind of gave you a little bit of a like, oh, actually, yeah, I could be doing more and I do still want this. And then obviously things came along afterwards. So in terms of the way that you did go off track, I mean, this time around, we'll, we'll touch on this in just a second, but you've been able to navigate your nutrition and your training super, super well. What do you think the difference has been? I mean, aside from the fact that, you know, you didn't go into a lockdown, what do you think the main difference has been from being able to navigate the post fat loss phase so much better this time around versus the first time round? I think mentally I'm just a lot um, in a, in quite a different place um, than I was then. So even in the lead up to my first fat loss phase, I was actually just focusing on, you know, I had so much other thing, like so many other things going on, like planning the wedding, um, work, all, the, all that stuff. So this time around, I was actually able to throw myself into the training, into the nutrition, um, actually think about it, enjoy it. Like I absolutely fell in love with it. And, um, you know, the whole process was just, I, I, I mean, I would do it again, like, and I've said this to you, like, I really, really, really enjoyed it and learning about all that stuff as well. Um, and then kind of like, um, doing like, like other courses on it, just cause I did like, just find it so much, so interesting at the time. Um, and that, and I think also at the back end of the first fat loss phase, not being a, not managing it as well. I learned from that. Like I learned that, you know, even like you can work out as much as you want. You can walk as much as you want. You can do as much cardio as you want. If you're not eating right, you're not going to see what you want to see. Not to say that, you know, at the back end of my first one, I was still eating a hell of a lot better than I was the year before. It was, I was still in a good place. It was just, I knew where I could be. Um, and which is, you know, that's also what's kind of helped this time round and managing where I'm at now um, and nutritionally and stuff as well. And just, um, yeah, and being more creative with food, right? Like there's so many, like, yeah, there's chicken, like there's so much you can do with it. There's um, the Beyond Meat Burger, like if you want to be veggie, there's so much you can do with that. Like it's just about being creative so your food doesn't feel, you don't feel like you're eating the same foods all the time things like that so yeah 100%. yeah no i completely agree and i feel like you you made a couple of very very good points there and the one main one is that i think people are tripped up a lot because they compare themselves to the prior versions of themselves and as much as there's a big contrast between you know where you were and where you are now and that's amazing you know you really shouldn't be comparing yourself to your old self because of you know, that baseline isn't very high. And what you just said there is that you compared yourself to where you know you can be. And I think that's a better comparison to have. You do want to acknowledge the wins and, you know, being so far away from where you have been, but you've got to remember how low that baseline was. So if you actually look towards what you could be, then, you know, you're going to be onto something really, really powerful then. And obviously, you know, the second reverse diet came after the photo shoot. And it wasn't like you made a decision and then we started prepping towards it. There was a lot of back and forth. So go into your decision-making process around going through the photo shoot in the end, and then we'll touch on the experience. So what held you back from booking it for so long, aside from uh, restrictions of COVID, of course, but you know, what were the <laughs> inner battles in your mind? Oh God. So I guess the first one was definitely what you just alluded to about kind of comparing myself to the year before and the fact that I had gotten into really, really good shape for the wedding and not being able to manipulate that. So I was really scared that 
I, that wasn't going to happen again for me. Um, and then it would have been like, well, what's the point of doing a photo shoot if, you know, I'm not going to be in the best shape of my life. So that was the first thing. The second thing was COVID related because the gym shut down, um, which also kind of, it was on the back end of the, my prior thought that I'm not, how am I going to get into the best shape without going to the gym and lifting those, you know, really heavy weights and the machines and all that stuff. Um, so that was my second thought. Um, and my third thought was just that it sounds really crazy now because it's like, why were you thinking that? Because I had done it before, but it was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that again. Like, but I, and I, I don't know why I thought that. Um, and so I probably was, so, you must've been like, she's being so annoying. Cause I was like, okay, I'm going to book it. And then I was like, actually, no, like this went on for a good few months, didn't it? Like I just, I'm like, yeah, I'll book it. And then I was like, no, I'm not booking it. And then I think I booked it maybe a month and a half before it actually happened. Um, cause that's when I actually started to see really good changes in my body. And I was like, actually, I think we'll be okay. Um, and what's actually happened is I feel a lot stronger. Um, I feel like I look a lot better than I did last year, which I never thought would have happened. And um, yeah, it just it just goes to show that, you know, consistency um, and, you know, a good training program and good nutrition, like really good nutrition. Like I was weighing everything to the gram for this um, and just keeping everything on point. Um, for a goal um it just works wonders yeah no yeah. i mean there was a point in which i i don't know if i told you this but at one point i thought that you just weren't gonna do it um and i was okay with that <laughs> I, I actually just thought i was like you know what i don't know if this is gonna happen or not and then obviously eventually when you had the conversation with the then photographer and you finally booked her i was like hey that's, that's <laughs> awesome so but yeah there was a point in which i was thinking no nah, i'm not sure she's gonna pull the trigger on this one but i no. was being really annoyed I know. <laughs> no, I think it was more the sense that like, I had no doubts that you were going to turn up in better shape than you were like you and I think it did surprise us in terms of how much muscle you were able to put on even with just the year of home training, right? Um, because your physique was significantly better. I knew it would be better, but it was significantly better. So I think that was yeah. m m from my estimations I was like, yeah, there's no doubt she's going to be better. So for you, you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to look better. And I was like, you're totally <laughs> going to look better. Just, just book it. Um, but no, interestingly <laughs> enough, you obviously followed through with it. So talk to me about your photo shoot experience. I know that it's something that you you know, really took to something you want to do again. So tell me about that and uh, the whole experience of, you know, the final stages of prep and the photo shoot itself. Yeah. So I think I was quite lucky because I was being, because of the whole journey for the, from the back end of my last um, fat loss phase, being, having gone down a bad, not a bad route, but going down that route and then coming back out of it, I stayed on that path for quite some time so I was on a good path with everything um and so I didn't find the back end of the journey as grueling um I really really enjoyed it like I can't I probably sound really crazy but I did I really enjoyed kind of the grind and the workouts and the nutrition again it's you know when you are on low cat like I was on lower calories but it's about finding those what like high volume foods to keep you full um and you know good good nutrition um and all that stuff so i really really enjoyed it i loved my walks i still do obviously um just threw myself into the process so with regards to the back end of the shoot like loved it <laughs> um of the prep um and then the actual shoot i obviously so i didn't want to get a spray tan <laughs> i know i spoke to you about this um, and I spoke to some other people about it and I was like, I really don't want one. I don't want to look like an, like an Oompa Loompa. Um, but I remember going to, and I did it. You told me to get it done just the day before. And I actually didn't listen to you because I didn't want it. I went two days before. So I was like, so it can wash off a little bit. And um, I remember messaging you the day I got it done. I was like, I actually really like it. It looks like I've just been on like an amazing holiday. Like I can see all my definition. Um, so it made me feel a lot better for the actual shoot. Like as, from a mindset point of view and the confidence side of things, um, I just felt really good. Um, and then, oh, so the day before, I thought I would have had to like really go hard in the gym, like do my steps, do loads of cardio and not eat very much. And the, 
morning of I thought I'd have to like really starve myself but when you're sitting there telling me like don't move <laughs> like the day before like just, just rest and on the day of like in the morning you can have chocolate and cocoa pops so I was like what is this um so that was really amazing um and I think I was I said to you I was looking forward to the cocoa pops more than I was looking forward to the shoot at that point um yeah <laughs> And then um, the actual shoot was um, really good fun. Ben's obviously very goofy. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about a number of photographers and he said, go with Ben because he, he will make you feel really at ease. Um, and he could tell, he could see that I'd never done anything like this before. I was awkward as, you know, awkward at all. Um, and he took the first few sh shots and showed them to me. And then he was like, look, you look really good. Like you're good you're fine and I was still I think I was being quite awkward um my face was like he showed me the other pictures like my eyes were like sticking out because I was just like overly trying to do something I don't know what I was doing um he made it so enjoyable because he was just like oh just pretend you're Beyonce or like blah 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 um anyway <laughs> it was really good fun um the shots came out quite nicely I'm happy with them um it was just really enjoyable from like deciding on doing the shoot to resting and Coco Pops to doing the shoot. Um, yeah, I would definitely do it again. Um, and it's one of those things that even if I didn't do it again, I've got those photos, like, you know, when I'm, I don't know, 60 or whatever, like I have them to look back on and be like, I did that, like, you know, yeah. hundred percent. They'll be there for you in the future. You know, you can always look back on it and it's, yeah, it's, it's an amazing achievement. And I, I'm not a big proponent on everyone doing shoots. I know some people are more intent on people doing shoots than others. I just think it's a yeah. nice way to capture the, all the efforts you put in from a physical perspective, yeah. right? You get an opportunity to present that in its best manner, right? Um, and even if people don't have photo shoots, I do encourage people to get some photos because if you, know, if you celebrate your graduation or your wedding, these significant milestones in your life, I think getting in the shape of your life is it's up there right and it, it depends on the person and their perception but i think it is up there so i like the photo shoot because it just then gives you that representation of all that hard work you put in and that's what it look that is what it is for me yeah and i you know i didn't want to do the photo shoot during the wedding time and also because i thought i'd have my wedding photos um and i kind of regretted it because i was like well i don't have that and so this time around i was like I'm just gonna do it because I have something then and you know like and it is um I don't want to say it's hard work I mean it is hard work but it's I don't know what the word is but it's it's a whole chain it's a lifestyle change and you've got something to not that you need something to show for it but it's nice to have it's like you said it's a nice touch it's the cherry on top of the cake it really you know you still get the cake if you don't have it but you know you get that little extra so I think that's a nice nice uh tokens to have and, and a memory of or a physical memory of what you achieved and then hopefully you get to keep hold of those results which we are doing at the moment and obviously you're now in a phase where we're you know focusing on building those calories back up we're going to be focusing on you know getting you stronger in the gym putting on more muscle for probably a shoot in the future so yeah what are you currently working on in the gym and with your training now and obviously you've now taken a step to be an online health and fitness coach which i think is absolutely incredible so how is that going to Right, so my fitness at the moment is, so I'm generally, um, I have a lot more energy just because I'm eating more food, which is really welcomed. It was initially, maybe for like a couple of days, a bit of a mindset thing because I was like, oh, if I eat more food, I'm just gonna put on weight. And But it was silly to think that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so with more food obviously came more energy, um, which means I had more energy to lift more and lift heavier in the gym, which has been nice. Um, I know I need to just get better at recording myself and sending them to you. I'll, I will get on that. But I have been able to up the weights that I'm doing, um, which is really, really nice. Um, both mentally and physically, um, just being able to do that has been really, really great. Um, I've kept up my cardio just because I enjoy it. Again, it, for me, it's a release. Um, so that's been really good. Um, and steps have dropped massively, which um, has... I found it a bit weird initially just because I was doing so many steps before, but it's now, it's given me so much 
given me back so much time. Um, so that's quite nice. And then, um, yeah, with regards to the health and fitness online stuff. Um, so you've obviously, like, it's very clear that you've, like, changed my life. <laughs> um, and just, like, the, the way I live my life is, like, completely different now, obviously. And my the reason I wanted to start the health and fitness stuff was just to help other women. Um, the amount it's changed my life and the way it's changed my life, not just from a physical perspective, but also mental uh, so the anxiety and stuff so even you know at the back end of my first fat loss phase we said I wasn't you know I wasn't being super adherent but even though I wasn't I was still eating better like I said and I was still feeling a lot better than I was the year before there was no shortness of breath or anything like that and so I started just you know so you know even if I just helped one person I would have been happy um and yeah, it's just kind of um, ticking along nicely, which is great. Um, and again, I, you know, got really, really into like the nutrition side of things and kind of uh, learnt more about all of that stuff and obviously the fitness stuff. So yeah, it's, um, you've been a really great influence. <laughs> I often get told off by my husband, like when I'm supposed to be working on my business, who he literally the other day, he was like, I think I was watching Real Housewives or something. And he was like, you should take Elliot's work ethic, work ethic. He was like, he works really hard. And he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been really good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. And uh, no, it's been beautiful to see. And there's nothing more rewarding from a coach's perspective than to see someone embody the learnings that you try and impart on them. And you've done that tenfold, right? So it's just been beautiful for me to watch, especially from seeing you like when you first started, right? From going from where you were then all the way up into where you are now, it's it's just been a beautiful journey to witness and I'm really happy just to have played a part in it. So on to my final question is, actually I have two final questions. The first one is, where do you see your health and fitness journey in maybe 10 years time? Oh my God. Um, I'd hope I'm, you know, still in good shape <laughs> no I think I'd you know I want to get stronger in the gym um want to continue eating well or as well as I yeah well um just continue on the momentum I've built and just keep going I mean this thing is like it's a journey it's a continuous journey I don't see it stopping um you know even though I've hit my you know best shape of my life like maybe my next fat loss phase will be better I don't know um and even right now I'm pretty happy with the way things are at the back end of that fat loss phase um but again you know it's evolving i'm evolving um and it's not just a fitness and nutrition journey like for me I mean, for everybody like it's also a mental journey right like whether you're dealing with anxiety or depression or not it's mentally you know if you weren't able to if you thought before you weren't able to um i don't know drop five kg but you've actually ended up dropping 10 15 that's massive so it's just like yeah yeah it's just evolving you know like there'll be maybe other mental challenges or physical challenges that come up later in life that i can deal with better than i would have it's exciting i'm looking forward to watching it unfold and the final question i have for you is that you're just saying how it's an ongoing journey and you know you built it into a lifestyle what would you say to people who would love to be in that position? Because I think a lot of people would, who just don't see it happening yet. You know, who don't, who can't foresee themselves being, you know, going to the gym for years and years to come, eating a certain way for years and years to come. What advice would you give them? I would say have more faith in yourself, firstly. Um, secondly, you know, find a coach, <clears throat> Mr. Hasu. Um, who will kind of guide you in the right way, you know, not just from giving you, it's not just, you know, him giving you a training and nutrition program. It's so much more than that. Um, it's a whole, you know, mindset shift. It's a lifestyle shift and fall in love with the process and don't focus too much on the end goal. Um, Cause if you fall in love with the process and you stop stressing about that goal weight, you'll automatically start ticking those boxes. You'll, you know, you'll eat well, you'll hit the steps, you'll, um, you'll tra do your training. And by doing those things, you're doing the right things in order to get to your goal weight. So 
yeah so it'll be those three things i'd say like and just like i said have more faith in yourself um if i can do it anybody can do it basically um yeah honestly like i didn't i would never have thought i'd be here two years ago ever it's amazing super inspiring i think that's an, a fantastic closing message as well so thank you so much uh first of all for like i just said earlier for taking on all of the you know the learnings the feedback i gave you and applying it so well and being where you are today it's been like i said really really beautiful to watch and see you grow and grow so i look forward to seeing more of that and thank you for imparting your wisdom on the podcast i'm sure a lot of people take value from this and obviously you being the first client to come on i think that's really exciting so if people want to connect with you and follow your journey where is the best place for them to find you and do that uh, would be my Instagram and uh, my handle is um, at Bodycraft Anika, so A-N-I-K-A. Perfect. I will put that in the show notes as well. So yeah, reach out to Annika, take a, a screenshot of this podcast and tag us both in it. Let us know what you enjoyed. And that is everything from us today, guys. Thank you again, Anika. Have an amazing week ahead, guys. Take care and we'll speak very soon.